Hello and welcome. Today we're going to work on a random password generator in Excel. So let's get started. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial skills, including Excel. Now, the video idea that I have came from the Excel Hub, and so if you'll check out his video, Create Random Passwords in Excel, it's an excellent video. I'm using different functions, but um, I really want you to watch that video. He's got an excellent channel. So the Excel functions we're going to use are the following. Concat, which is a newer version of concatenate. Count ifs with an S is a newer version of count if. I'm going to use formula text. I'm going to use if, ran between, and then XLOOKUP. You may not know about XLOOKUP. I'll post a link to a video below on XLOOKUP. That is an Excel 365 function that's replacing VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. Also, I'm going to use named ranges. I don't know a lot of people that, that use that. And so you, that's one skill that you want to know in Excel. So let's say I have a password list and I have the following websites and the dates that I changed my password and I have these passwords and they're really bad passwords because I'm going to show you how to do a password check. I've got a long formula but we'll build, build it step by step because what I found I found the top 100 bad passwords and so I just used some of those and so we have a password check that's going to show hey this password is bad we want to improve that and I'm going to use a randomizer and show you how to randomize the Excel using Excel randomize the password so let's get started step by step so let me delete all this and I'll just leave that randomizer up there um, we'll do randomizer second so here's what we want to do on the password check. The first thing I want to do uh, is on the passwords, let's highlight the entire password, all this list of 100 passwords. So I'm using command shift down or control shift down. So you want to select everything. And right here by the formula bar, I'm going to call this, I'm going to name this range. So I'm going to call it passwords, an easy one to remember. So anytime that I access the range, you know, B2 all the way down, I can use this phrase, I can use this named range called passwords. So that's going to be helpful. Now that I've named my range, so let's go back and start building this password check formula. The first step we're going to do, we're going to do it in a couple of different steps. Let's do count if. So what I want to do is find out if any of these passwords are on that bad password list. Now, all these should be on the bad password, and I made a really good password, exclamation point, which is not on the list. Let's do another one. Let's, let's call it, um, this is also really good. Okay, so these two should pass the test, and so we'll show how that works. So the password check, we need to do a count ifs. So I'm going to use my formula builder up here the top FX, so I'm going to search for count ifs. So count ifs, I need two things. I need a criteria range, which is passwords. Here's one reason why we did it, because you can see here's the list of all the 100 passwords. And the criteria, I'm going to point to the ASDF, this first one, and hit done, and it counts. So it's listed one time in that bad password list. So we're going to copy this down. So we have QWERTY is in there. Now the word password is in there a couple of times, like password and password one or password one, two, three or whatever. So it's counted it a couple of times. And all these are on there at least once. And then really good password exclamation point. This is also really good. Neither one of them are on there. So they're, according to this check, they're good passwords. So the other thing we want to do, we want to come up with, well, what is it going to say rather than one or two or zero? So let's wrap this in an if statement. So go, let's go back to the very top. And if, and we'll start the parentheses. So our logical test is going to be if the count ifs equals zero. So that's going to be a good password. If it equals zero, what do we want to do? Now here's what I'm going to recommend. Let's try to put a symbol in there like an emoji rather than say yes or no or whatever. You may not know you can do this. Well, I'm using a Mac, so 
the function that I use is might be different than pull up an emoji, but you just need to pull up an emoji. So I'm going to put the check symbol. You can see I'm building this formula. And then I need to put wrap it in double quotes and then a comma. And then I need to put a symbol that um, is going to be a caution. So I'm going to use this caution one. And I need to wrap it also in double quotes. So I've got double quotes, caution, double quotes, close parentheses. That's closing the parentheses on the if statement. So let's clear and see what we have. So you see now we have a password check. And then all the way down we can copy it. And so the password check is going to be if it is on the list, it's going to be a caution. And if it's not on the list, then it will be a plus. Now we can do one more thing here. What if we don't have one? If we don't have a password, does that concern us? It probably doesn't, but if we want to change that and, and just leave it blank, then we can wrap this in one more if statement. So let's go to the top and we'll say if, and we'll put a parentheses here. And so we say, hey, if this cell equals blank, and I'm going to put double quotes because that's blank, then I'm going to leave that. I'm going to put comma. Then I'm going to leave that blank. That's the, the yes condition. If not, then this whole thing becomes the false condition. And I'm going to close parentheses. So what should happen is, if we copy it all the way down, then we should have blanks rather than caution if there is a not a password in that column D. Now, I use formula text. Let me show you how to, I did this. Formula text is a function that just shows what the formula is in a cell. So you see, I use the count ifs for passwords, and then I wrapped it in an if statement for the check and the caution, and then I wrapped it in another if statement if it's blank, just leave it blank to kind of show the, the error. Uh, wouldn't show an error where it's a caution if it's a blank password. Now, we need to do the randomizer, so let me show you how to do that, and we'll come back to this at the very end. The randomizer, here's what I have. I have six, 15 different digits. I've randomized numbers, and I use the lookup, and then put it all together in this random, random password. So here's what we have. Let me get rid of all this. So what I've done is I've put all the capital letters, A through Z, all the lowercase letters, A through Z. I put 1 through 0 on the numbers, and I did symbols. So that turned out to be 76 different symbols, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and symbols. So what I need to do is I need to randomize all this and pick 1 through 76. So what I'm going to do, once again, I'm going to name some ranges. So I'm going to highlight this, go all the way down. I'm going to call this um, numbers. I'm going to call the A, B, C all the way down through the lowercase and through the numbers and the symbols. I'm going to call this uh, digits just to make it easy. So I've got numbers and digits. So the first thing I want to do is I want to calculate a random number. So I'm going to use the rand between function. So ran between, I can pick a, a bottom number, which is 1, and the top number that it will select is 76. Now, it can pick 1 and 76, so you want to make sure that you, you have uh, 76 here is the number that I used. So 1 through 76, it will randomize and pull those numbers 1 through 76 in a random fashion. Now, the result is volatile, and what that means is, so here it pulled 63. And if we use anything we do to update this table, or if we use the F9 function, it will randomize it. There's 75, there's 59, 44, so on. So now we're going to take this, and we're going to copy this all the way across. And so now we have random numbers 1 through 76, and we've done that 15 times. We've got 15 digits on our random password. Now we need to take this. Well, so this is the second digit is number four, so it's going to pull a capital D. 
and then so on. Number six here, uh, the ninth digit is six. It'll pull a capital F. So we want what we want to do is I'm going to use the function called um, xlookup. Now xlookup is is a modern function that replaces vlookup. So let me show you how this one works. The lookup value I'm going to point to the number, the random number up above, which is 22. The lookup array, I call that numbers. So it's going to look in numbers. And the return array, I call that digits. So it's going to pull, if it looks for 4, it's going to pull the capital D. And if it's not found, one of the advantages on the xlookup over vlookup is you can put a, if not found, you can put a, a note. So I'm going to put none if there's it should, 1 through 76, it should pull a number, but if there's some kind of error, we'll know rather than just have an error. And the match mode, let's go up here to the top. Uh, the match mode is going to be exact match. We're fine with that. And the last one is we're going to search first to last. So now I can hit done. And so number 29 should be the lowercase c. And let's copy this all the way across. We should be able to do that easily. And you see everything gets updated. So let's look at one of the, um, let's test our, our work here. So number one should be a capital A. Certainly it is. 13 is M. 13 is M. And capital M. So what I've done is randomize this. Randomize the numbers, which then does, does a lookup. It uses specifically X lookup. So you can see here's my two functions that I've used. And then the last thing we want to use, I'm going to use a function. There's uh, several functions that are very similar. There's concatenate, there's text join, but I'm going to use concat. And so let me search for concat. Concat. And all I have to do on concat, because I can do a range, all I have to do is highlight this entire range. So it's going to stick all these digits together into one password. So I'm going to hit done. And so what I have is I have a password that's 35 MC, capital MC, pound sign. So here is my randomized password. Now if I want to update it, all I have to do is change something in the spreadsheet or I hit F9. So F9, and you can see I can change. These are all brand new randomized passwords. So let's go back to our password list and we'll use, show how we would use it. So I'm going to point to, so I'm going to put equals and point to the randomizer digit and hit OK. So there we have, if I hit F9, you see that I'm going to have consecutive passwords. So you say, hey, uh, I have a problem with these passwords that I have. So I'm going to put copy, so Command or Control C. And then down here, I'm going to right click and paste special values. So there, there is my new password. I'm going to go to Amazon and do that. And the same thing, you can say, well, I've updated this. So you can do control and then the semicolon. And so today's date, I'm recording the video, is May 24th, 2021. So you see I now have a good password. It's randomized. And there it is. I can use that to update my Amazon password. So let's calculate one more and let's show you how it works and you can see how it works all the way down. So let's say we want to change our next one, which is Google. And we want to, if you paste it, it's going to be an error because it'll be the formula and a lookup function. And so we want to paste special. We need to paste the value and we're only pasting the value here. So we can now update. We're going to update our date. And so we know, hey, we have a good password. It passed the password check. Here's our date. We updated it and so on. We can go all the way through and update. As we need, we can update all our passwords. So this is how you do a random password generator in Excel. I hope this is helpful. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for watching.